Hello learners, I am Garima Vasti and today we are going to talk about sitting arrangements in an activity based classroom. So why do we study about the different kinds of sitting arrangements in an activity based classroom? One is that when we talk about seating arrangements, then we talk about the skills which are required in a real classroom. So as teachers, we do know about the different learning methods, we know about what is good for our child or for our student. But to transact this theory into practice, it is important that we also acquire the skills to use knowledge in a real classroom. Now, every class faces problems and they can disturb you. For example, if I as a teacher or somebody teacher is all well prepared with an activity, they go into a classroom and the children are all looking outside and they are interested because outside there is rain. So what do you do in that situation? So as a teacher, we have to decide what are the methods and what are the strategies that are required so that maybe I can tell the children that, okay, let's go out and do something. Or if it's raining too heavily or if there is something that I want to do inside the class, then I'll relate that outside activity to the inside activity which I'm going to do in my class. So that is a strategy. We call this as management skills. So for an effective teaching process, along with subject knowledge that you already have as a teacher and your knowledge about the teaching process and the clarity that you have about teaching process, it is very important that you also have the management skills as a teacher. You must have heard of the term known as classroom management skills, how to manage a classroom, how to manage children in this classroom. So. These skills are what we talk about when we are talking about the different sitting arrangements when we do activities. So hence effective teaching is equal to effective learning. And in order to make this transaction better, classroom management requires us an ability to plan. That is we see what is appropriate for our class, for the child in our class. We try to control and facilitate the interaction in the classroom. That is, how is it that the children are going to unfold a particular thing? Is it an appropriate activity according to their mental ability or their age? And will it promote learning? Will it promote situations which require the child to learn more, to go beyond what the child already knows? and it also promotes the process of learning. Am I able to do that? And along with all of this, while we are looking at classroom as a whole, it is important to consider the individual differences which are present in each and every child. What are the needs of a particular child? What are the abilities of these different children? So, for example, in a classroom, one child may have a very low concentration or maybe you know he or she is very finicky in a particular day or time or maybe after lunch break the child is very sleepy or something what do you do to manage the child you know rather than scolding but somehow making an activity which is really something which the child needs to do so we get up and we move and the child learns to do all of this is done in the available space and time which is there in the classroom. As teachers, we know that we have some periods which is of either 45 minutes or 40 minutes or even if they are not, if we are in elementary school and we are just a teacher teaching an entire classroom for an entire day, then also we have before lunch break, after lunch break or various breaks. So how do we use the time and space accordingly, according to our own needs? Sitting arrangement, when we talk about sitting arrangements, it is important to note that they are for different purposes. Different arrangements cater to different needs, cater to different purposes. So seating arrangements are going to depend on the nature of an activity that you're about to do in the classroom. So for a whole class activity, which requires 
everybody in the class to participate, a different seating arrangement is required. Well, for small group activities where you may want to divide the children into trios or groups of six, whatever, you have a different sitting arrangement. We will talk about this. If we have individual activities that you want children to do, then there is a different seating arrangement. So your nature of activity, while it depends on the concept which you are going to teach, that is how I want to teach this concept, and then you decide whether I use my class as a whole, whether children need to discuss in smaller groups or whether individual learning is the best. So this is decided by you as a teacher. The nature of activity is decided by you and it depends on the concept. But once you have decided that nature of activity, then you decide how do we use these different arrangements? How are we going to make the children sit in classrooms? So the first type of arrangement we are going to talk about is the sitting arrangement for whole class teaching. I'm starting with this uh, because this is the most commonly used whole class teaching and probably you as teachers have also gone through it and you do it or as children when you were students you have been uh, exposed to this kind of an arrangement. It is very simple if you see uh, there is a block called teacher where the teacher sits that is usually in the front of the classroom and the small circles are basically students. So this is what a classroom, what our traditional classrooms look like. And this kind of sitting arrangement is appropriate for whole class teaching. Now what are the characteristics here? The teacher, if you see, she is right in front of the students. She looks at the students in the front row. If I'm sitting as a teacher, I'm only able to look at maybe the first two rows. After that, I can't really look at the other students. If I stand, then also there is a limited portion of children which I can see. So here, I am not really able to concentrate on the so-called backbenchers or the children who are sitting in the back. Then. Uh, I have and because I'm unable to see them I also have problems of attention which is I pay them less attention because my sight doesn't reach that back. So in this kind of an arrangement group work is not possible. All you can do is probably information giving which is lecture method. So group work is not really an option here. So if we are talking about an activity based classroom then this kind of a seating arrangement seems to be inappropriate for that particular scenario. This is what, that was a sample arrangement, this is what it looks like. And even if you see in this picture, the teachers are standing there and you can see the backbenchers are actually involved talking amongst themselves. Children in the front are the only one who are looking at the teacher. So clearly this is not the kind of seating arrangement we want in an activity-based classroom. Next, we talk about sitting arrangement for teacher demonstration. We have already talked about what do we mean by teacher demonstration. It is basically where as a teacher, I'm going to demonstrate something. It can be an experiment. It can be an activity. It can be demonstration of a particular working model, anything. But here, I require my children to be able to see me. In elementary classes, we can talk about storytelling. So if I'm using a book or a poster to tell my children stories, then I require all eyes and ears on me. It is important that the children are able to look at me or able to see and hear me properly. So if you see here, then the small circles, again representing the children, and the bigger circle with T written is you as a teacher, then we see that every child is placed in such a manner that he or she can look at the teacher directly. And hence, they are closer to the teacher, they can also hear them. So basically, these kind of sittings are used to tell stories. Generally, in elementary classes, you can use it for storytelling, again, read alouds, you can recite poems, 
There are many times we want our children to stand up and do poems. Sometimes we can do it while sitting. You can also conduct an experiment. Now here it is important to remember that we are talking about demonstration. So the experiment is being conducted by you, the teacher. The students are merely sitting and observing what is happening, probably noting down what is happening. So here you use experiments. You can solve mathematical problems which are supposed to be stepwise where you want the child to see every step and it is appropriate for holding discussions as well. You hold discussions with the children, children hold discussions within themselves. So this kind of a method is used for all of these activities in your class. This is what you can see is here the teacher is actually doing a storytelling session where she is reading from the book. So the children are able to hear her and from the picture we can see that there are vowels written on the blackboard A E I O U. So probably she is pointing out the vowels or how they sound from the words in the storybook. So this is the kind of semicircle that you create where every child is able to look at the teacher. Next we come to sitting arrangement for a group activity. Here basically children are sitting in smaller groups. You see they are clustered together at different places. There are four corners in the class and there are four groups around where the children are sitting and one of the group is in the center. So you see that there are also spaces between the groups that is Children are able to discuss, they are able to sit with each other, talk and hold discussion in smaller groups while not disturbing or being disturbed by the other group. Now this kind of arrangement where you form groups around the corners of the classes, it also allows movement for you as a teacher because when children are doing group activity, you merely won't be sitting, you will be moving around, right? So generally when we talk about Group activities, we talk about four to six students, group of four to six students, depending upon the strength of your class. And this is, as I mentioned before, useful for discussions so that children can hear each other's opinions and coming up with solutions. So if you've given them a project and you want them to discuss, this is probably the best sitting arrangement. Now the teacher in this kind of a classroom, as I said, you'll be moving around. It is important because you are going to monitor the progress of these activities. How is it that maybe the task you have given to the students or the task that the children have decided themselves, how is it that they are progressing on that graph? So the teacher is monitoring. You move around the class, you observe different groups and you monitor them, you see. And when we do this, we also note involvement of an individual student in an activity. That is what CCE or comprehensive evaluation is all about, continuous comprehensive evaluation. We say that while the child is learning, the teacher should be able to assess them. So this is exactly what we are doing here. Children are discussing and we or I as a teacher will be moving from one group to another and noting down the individual activity, the individual involvement of a student, see what are their levels, what are their group contribution, what are their group uh, abilities, for example, cooperation. So this is the kind of seating arrangement which is appropriate for group activities. This is a real situation. This is just a one group it's a smaller group and you can see that the children are doing a project here and it's apparently to do something with bees so you can see that there they have a model where a small bee is kept they are discussing in one of the child a girl is noting down something they are marking something maybe a teacher has given them a worksheet and they are supposed to do it what do you think about it and everything so this is how this is just one group you have several of them like they were there in the sample group and you use it for group activities. Then we talk about the sitting arrangement for a group competition. In this sitting arrangement you can see that there are 
two semicircles. The children are sitting in two semicircles, which can denote two teams, and the teacher is sitting in the middle, in the center. And here it is a competition. So generally, it can be quiz. Generally, teachers do it within the class when they have done a particular chapter and they want to assess. So a competition is something that we do within the classroom. This kind of sitting arrangement facilitates discussion within the group members where the group members are able to talk amongst themselves and while they are doing that again they have some distance from the competitor team. So one group asks question and the other group members discuss among themselves and then they answer and same happens again and this process is repeated. So one of the games or competition that I can think about at this time is when children sit together and uh, you try to give them some cards and you say that, you know, these are picture cards basically and you say that these are the five picture cards or ten picture cards, depends on the students that are there. If there are more students, then more picture cards are required. And you say that you are supposed to enact or tell the student about what is drawn in this picture. And the other competitor team, which is, is going to give you a picture card, one of you will come and they will enact it or they generally are going to use sentences. For example, if I have a picture card of ice cream, they are going to say it is sweet. We like it, we have it in summers. So the other team has to guess that it's an ice cream. So like that, there are these activities where you are improving children's communication skills, language skills, and the children are also enjoying it, enjoying the teaching learning process. You can also use this for geography and social science, teaching of those subjects where you can actually ask them to describe about a state so they know about the characteristics or the specialization of a particular state. This you can see is how they are sitting inside of a semicircle. This is actually a very younger class so there are adult teachers also who are sitting right behind the students while students are talking to each other but uh, seems to be an oral activity here. But in elementary classrooms where you move up the grades, then students are on their own and the teacher generally sits in the middle of a semicircle. So these were the types of sitting arrangements that we use inside a classroom. And basically, these are there to promote effective learning in a particular classroom. As I mentioned earlier, this knowledge provides you with a skill set that you can practically go and use in a classroom. It will facilitate not just individual but also group learning, different kinds of learning which you want. So as a teacher, if you have decided something on paper, how are you going to apply it? That is what comes here. And not only are we using the available space, but we are optimally using it. There is an optimum use of available space and time which happens inside the classroom. There are different types of seating arrangements as we saw for different kinds of activities. And this is how you also provide maximum opportunities to the student to participate in all the activities in the school because if you are doing something with an activity based approach then everybody is involved, every student is involved. So they have an opportunity to participate and they are exposed to these new activities in the school or in the classroom that you are doing and they become active learners and they are participative in the class. They are not meek students who are just sitting and you have no idea about their learning levels but rather here you can see how much every child has learned and they learn from each other which is best. This kind of uh, activity generally it creates a good student to student bond but it also creates a very healthy student to teacher bond because the teacher is somebody who is 
not strict now and is all fun she likes you to learn and uh, she is somebody who is conducting competitions doing activities with you and so here the teacher is friendly the children are able to open up in such kind of a learning environment they'll be easily able to ask you questions if they have any queries they won't be a chance that they are unable to ask because they are scared you have broken the ice here so it creates a small student to teacher bond and at last it also provides free and comfortable atmosphere to facilitate these discussions there is liberty here you can easily talk to the students students can talk to you and there can be different discussions children also learn to take in the point of view of other students or new point of views so it's they are able to easily accept new ideas and adapt them they are also easily able to rationalize their own feelings because they know they have to voice them out in front of their peers so this is all that we are going to talk about in this lecture and we discussed about the different seating arrangements and how they help us how they actually help you transact the teaching learning process that you have planned the ability of you as a planner is there and now you also have acquired the skills to actually do it in a classroom so this is all for today now thank you and i'll see you in another lecture